Hi, this is Carl from Web Courses Bangkok and this is making realistic shadows in under five minutes. Shadows are a great way to give a little bit of lift to your design, make it look a little bit more 3D and it's very very easy to do. So we're just going to go straight to Photoshop now. Okay, so this is what we're going to be creating. We're going to be creating first of all a stage that we'll be using um, to sort of make our shadows look really nice and here's an example of our shadow. So this is a nice little shadow just underneath our logo that you just saw here. All right. And with a little bit of light at the top there, it gives it that sort of realistic uh, lighting effect which would cast a shadow just below it. We've also got text, so we'll be showing you how to do that as well. And again, it's using the same sort of technique. So we're going to go straight into this. So just go to File and New. And then we're going to be using just a normal web preset of 640 by 480. Um, you can obviously use your own size, but just for this um, example, we're just going to use a small size. So just click OK. So first of all, what we need is a nice little gradient effect there. So we're going to be using a, a light sort of darkish gray there here. Not too dark, uh, but just at the top there. Just click OK for the foreground. And then for the background, a very, very light gray, almost white. So then we're going to use our gradient tool. Now with the gradient tool, it's important to check your settings. Often it gets uh, stuck with what you were doing just before. So we want to make sure that we've got this selected here, which is foreground to background. And we've got the linear gradient just selected here. So now we're ready. And what we're going to be doing is going from dark to light. So I'm actually going to start at the bottom. Reason for that is I've got my foreground, which is the dark color. So I'm just going to click and drag and let go. Perfect. It's exactly what we want. Now we've got the dark at the bottom, light at the top. We need some sort of horizon here, a bit like a, a floor. And the way we're going to do that is by using the marquee tool. And this is a little trick. You can actually sort of select about halfway down and we're only going to be painting a gradient within here. If you ever have anything selected, that's the only place you can edit. And it allows you to um, edit specific areas. So we're going to go back to our gradient tool, but this time we're going to start from the middle and move down. And it doesn't matter where I do this because it's just going in a linear way, so I can do it from anywhere. Okay, great. So now we're ready to sort of uh, put in some uh, nice little shine effects. Before we do that, we need to deselect. So we're just going to go Command and D, and that means we're ready to sort of do the next step. So the next step is going to be adding some shine. Now I'm just going to go make a new layer. Always important to make new layers just to allow you to keep editing things. So what we want is white for our foreground color. Now a little tip here is click on the side, move your mouse to the top left even if it goes outside of the color picker and then just let go and you'll have perfect white. So just click OK and then what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that the tear So we're going to make sure the gradient uh, doesn't fill the whole screen. We need to actually make it go from sort of foreground color to transparent. And we can do that from here very, very easily. Just click on the second one there. Okay. Now our first shine is going to be from the top. So I'm just going to move sort of all the way down there. And there we go. Now, as you can see, the, the gradient has gone right across like that. That's not kind of what we want with this effect. We want a sort of like a, a spotlight effect. And to do that, we need to use the radial uh, gradient. So I'm just going to go to Edit Undo, okay, and then select this one here. And you'll notice the difference. There we go. You can see a nice little sort of like glowing effect that comes out like that. Okay, so I'm just going to name my layer. Always important to name your layers, and I'm just going to call that shine. And again, I'm going to make a new layer again because we want another shine at the bottom, and do the same thing. Move up towards the middle, and it doesn't have to be too strong. Don't don't make it too strong. And I'm just going to do this one. Oops, right. Shine bottom. There we go. Great. So now we're ready to sort of bring in something that we want to do a shadow with. So I'm going to go back to my logo here, and I'm just going to do Command and A or Control and A for PC users, and then Command and C, and then back over to the design, and Command and V. Now this is really really big at the moment. We need to sort of resize that. Now I could do this. I could go Edit, Transform, 
or sorry, edit free transform, but that's a little bit boring. I'd like you to try this control and T or command and T. And I'm just going to move this in. Now, now sometimes it's very hard to make it look exactly circle. So to keep the constraint proportions, press shift. All right. And there we go. So we've got a nice little size. And I'm going to click in the middle. Don't click directly here because you'll see that the cursor changes. Click just like that, just in there. I'm going to put that right in the middle. Just perfect there. Now, again, I need to finish what I'm doing. And anytime you need to finish what you're doing with Photoshop, just do Control and Enter. Great. So from here now, what we're going to be doing is adding um, the shadow. So I'm just going to go to right click on here on layer one and then blending options. And I'm just going to click on drop shadow. OK, now we can change all these settings here, but we don't need to change it for this screencast. Uh, but you can change the size and, you know, you can change the spread and things like that or even the distance. Um, but for this, we don't really need to. So just click OK. Now, what I've noticed is that we need the shine on here. We need to make it look as though it's actually going to make uh, the shadow. So I'm actually going to move that in between the shine effects. And now I've got this nice little subtle shine there. OK. So I'm just going to move it down again. And there, ah, oh, perfect. And now we can see even more. OK. So it's important to see that shine. Great. So now we're ready to make this sort of shadow appear at the below. Now to do that, we need to detach it from the layer. So I'm going to just right click on drop shadow and then do create layer. Now it's going to moan and say, oh, you know, if you change any of the effects, it won't be reproduced on the layers. That's absolutely fine because we want it to be separate. So just click OK. So now it's made a new layer called drop shadow, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to click on the drop shadow and then I'm going to go to edit transform and distort and this is the easy part all I need to do is drag this middle bit and you can already see it and there it is there's our perfect little circle great alright so already this is looking like uh, a really nice shadow it's a little bit close so we're gonna change that in a minute now again we need to finish what we're doing so control and enter to finish what we're doing now the shadow is a little bit close so I'm just gonna go to the move command up here Okay, for those of you who like shortcuts, it's V. All right, and then just move the arrow keys down like that, just to move it down. Nice, nice. Now, if we want to make this um, a little bit sort of smaller, to reduce the width a little bit, I'm going to use Control and T like we did before. And then I'm just going to move this in just a little bit, as like a real shadow would be. Control and Enter again, Command and Enter for our Apple users. Perfect. Now, unfortunately, the, the, the uh, shadow is a little bit strong, so we have to reduce the opacity. Now, I chose about 20%. I think that looks okay. Okay, there we go. And I think that's just spot on. I'm just going to move it over a little bit. There we go. Perfect. So already that's looking really, really nice, and that was very easy to do. Now, let me show you again just how easy it is. So I'm going to right-click and then delete that layer, and I'm going to show you this again. So we've got our layer. Right click, blending options, drop shadow, click OK, right click on drop shadow, create layer, click OK, select the drop shadow, edit, transform, OK, and distort, then just move it down like that, command and enter, control and T to resize it, like so. And I'm just going to use arrow keys just to move it down, command and enter, and then reduce it down to 20%. Now look how fast that was. So, so quick to do. So very simple. All right. Always nice to name our layers. I'm just going to call that logo. And I'm just going to call that shadow. Perfect. So you can see how easy it is to do it for, for objects. Now let's move on to a bit of text. So I'm just going to group these layers first. I'm going to hold down control and then click the two layers that I want to group command and G that's command and G to group them click on the group and I'm just going to call that logo alright so we're ready to turn that off and then we can start again right so we're going to be using a little bit of text now so again I'm going to keep the text in the same place and I'm going to go for the text and I'm going to use a nice little gray gray color sort of not too dark the font is up to you. I like to use our DIN, shrunt, DIN font uh, because that's the actual uh, corporate font for web courses, Bangkok. Anyway, click once 
and then write WCB. Very, very, very easy, okay? Now again, with text, you need to finish what you're doing. So Control and Enter. Then I'm gonna do Control and T to resize, and I'm gonna hold down Shift as I'm doing that. And there we go, we've got our text now. Move it up a little bit. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Nice, okay? And if you remember, Command and Enter to finish what you're doing. Right, so the stage is set, and it's the same idea, the same sort of shadow idea. So you just right click, blending options, drop shadow, click OK, and then you've got the drop shadow here, right click, create layer, click OK. Now just in case you didn't see that, I'm just going to go to edit undo, I'm just going to move this layer up a little bit, and it's the same idea, so it's right click and then create layer. There it is, okay, so just click on create layer. So it's going to move this down a little bit. So I'll right click, create layer. So click OK. Alright, so now I've got the uh, the WCB drop shadow, and then here it is, edit, transform, distort, right from the middle, move it down, and there it is. Now, this looks really, really nice already, it's looking very, very close, but our light source is actually in front of it, sorry, sort of in the back of it, so that means that the shadow needs to be at the front, so I'm going to carry on moving this down. Like so, there we go, and you can put it off at an angle if you want, um, but I'm just going to keep it straight just to go with the uh, the light source. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys just to move it up, just so it's touching. And there we go, looking very nice. Command and enter to finish. Move it up one more. Perfect. Really, really, really nice, okay? And again, that took us just a few seconds. All right, reduce your opacity. All right, there we go. And we're done. Simple as that, okay? So that's a very, very easy way to do shadows. Um, you can make them look a bit more realistic by maybe adding some blur, uh, just to blur them out a little bit. Um, you can even add a little bit of a gradient on them as well, just to make them feel as though they're sort of fading out. Um, but it's entirely up to you. Okay, in fact, I can show you that now. I'm just going to hide that. that. Right-click, Blending Options, Drop Shadow, click OK. And I'm just going to create another shadow. If you remember, edit, transform, distort, and if I do that, just maybe a bit stronger, and just move that into place. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a very, very sort of like um, slight layer mask on here, and then get it to fade out. So the layer mask button is here. Click on that, and you'll see a layer mask appear. Select your gradient, and then just move down like this. Oh, we need to make sure we've got the linear gradient selected and black to white okay so let me just do that again very very quickly I'm just gonna delete this so I clicked on layer mask I clicked on gradient I clicked on black to white and I clicked on linear alright so uh, what I'm gonna do now is only I need to fade this out so I want this bit and I don't want that bit so I'm actually gonna fade out so I'm just gonna go from the bottom and move up or oh, maybe a bit further There we go. Just, just keep, keep playing with it, and there you go. In fact, it's starting to look like a reflection. So that's a, that's a quick way of doing reflections as well. And then just reduce that, and there we go. Got a lovely shadow that actually looks a bit like a reflection. So you can play with it like that many different ways. If I turn that off, turn that off, you've got your shadow, or here you've got a nice reflection. Great, well I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, it's a five minute way of just doing quick, realistic shadows. If you want any more information, please go to www.webcoursesbangkok.com, and we run courses on Photoshop, so if you want to learn more about this, just click on one of the, uh, the Photoshop courses, and we'll be happy to answer your queries. So if you want to uh, get in contact with me, you can always email me at carl at webcoursesbangkok.com. Hope this helps, and if you've got any comments, please put them below in the comments section. Thanks a lot now. Bye.